What's up guys, CP Mod here back with another video and today we're going to be talking about power supply myths. Just about every computer on the market, in fact every computer and every electronic device does need a power supply. And without one, really your computer doesn't work. Without a CPU or a video card or some RAM, you can still boot your system to a certain point, whether that's into Windows or into a BIOS, but without a power supply, you really can't do anything. And there's definitely quite a lot of myths going around. So I gathered up six of them to go ahead and talk about today, so let's jump into number one, which is buying the most expensive and highest end power supply is the best option. Now this is not necessarily the case because power supplies actually have a working range where they deliver the best efficiency to go ahead and give you well the best output especially if you are paying the power bill if you have a crazy OP power supply well you're gonna be paying a lot more in power as it's not gonna be in its efficiency range. A lot of power supplies do have a little efficiency graph on the back of the box and if they don't that's somewhere on the internet but a lot of the time buying the most expensive or the highest wattage power supply is not the best way to actually pick one up. Sure, if you're building a completely all-out crazy build, you're just going to go for the highest end power supply, but at the end of the day, for the most of us, buying the highest end or the most expensive power supply may not be the best option. However, at the same time, on the flip side, don't cheap out on the power supply, as it never is a good idea. Coming in at number two is, if I have a power supply with super high wattage, it will damage my PC. So this is another one that I do hear all the time, and this is also too not necessarily the case. Just because the power supply is rated with 1000 watts, doesn't mean it's gonna be constantly outputting 1000 watts. On a very, very, very basic level, when your video card ramps up, it's gonna draw more power, obviously making the power supply supply more power. Now obviously, there's a lot more technicality that goes into that, but on a very basic level, if the system's idling, it's not drawing a lot of power, meaning the power supply isn't going to be outputting into the system a lot of power. It's just going to be idling along as well. The wattage rating is actually the wattage that the system can actually go up to. So if it's a thousand watts, it can go up to 1000 watts. It doesn't necessarily mean it's constantly putting out 1000 watts. So if you are worried about damage, that's basically not really a thing to worry about. EPS, PCI, what is the difference in the connectors? There's actually quite a bit of difference in the connectors. EPS obviously is for your CPU connector, the little one up in the top left hand corner, and PCI is obviously for your PCI devices, and there is a difference in the voltages and also to the cable configuration. Just about all of them are usually keyed, whilst you can jam them into either one. Uh, at the end of the day, there is a difference between the two, and you do definitely need to make sure you plug in the EPS into the EPS slot and the PCI into the PCI slot. However, with that being said, a lot of modern power supplies have some sort of marking between the two so it's usually very easy to tell the two difference and there's also two usually a keying system meaning it's very difficult to actually plug it in but yes you can force it in and yes there is a difference so do make sure that you aren't plugging the wrong ones in. Speaking of plugging the wrong things in is what if I do plug in the wrong lead to the wrong part? Honestly it is extremely difficult to actually do that. Things like Molex is obviously different to SATA, the 24 pin is obviously the 24 pin so plugging the wrong actual plug into the wrong part is very, very difficult. However, if you do manage to do that, you can potentially kill the part that you're plugging into it as you may be sending voltages the wrong way or just putting too many volts through a certain part of the power supply or rather the system. And the power supply will usually be fine, but the system will probably be the part that actually suffers. In some cases, some high quality parts may have some sort of cutoff so the system completely shuts down if it detects the wrong voltages but usually at the end of the day it happens so fast like that that you can't really actually figure out what's going on until basically it's all over. So what if you plug it in? It's probably going to kill the part, but at the end of the day, thanks to the fact that a lot of modern computers all have specific parts for specific connectors, it's very hard to actually plug in the wrong connection. Coming in at question number five, this is actually a fairly common one. What if my PC uses more power than my power supply can actually give it? This is a pretty common question after someone does a system upgrade, whether there'll be a new video card, new CPU or something like that. A lot of people do ask the question, well, what happens if I use like more than the power supply can actually deliver? And the answer is pretty Pretty simple, the system will usually just turn off instantly or shut down. Uh, if you're drawing more power, it'll trip some sort of breaker and everything will just go black 
and nothing really will happen. Some power supplies will have a little switch on the back that you'll need to toggle to reset everything, uh, but most of the time, just let it sit there for like one second, hit the power button again, and you're ready to go. Now, you really don't want to be doing this all the time, as you're not going to be doing the back, not going to be doing the greatest rather for the power supply. So, uh, the best thing to do is make sure you do some sort of calculation before you put your system together to make sure you're not going to be running too much power. At the end of the day, though, if you have a 400 watt power supply and you draw 550, 500, or even 450, some power supplies will handle the 450, like 50 to 100 watts over what they're rated, but at the end of the day, usually they'll just trip, turn the system off, and you'll be sitting there with a black screen. Usually no damage to the computer, but hard to say with all the different manufacturers on the market. Efficiency doesn't matter, I'm not paying the power bill, so let's just buy whatever power supply and who cares about efficiency. Definitely, if you're not paying the power bill, you have less to care about when it comes to efficiency. However, you do still want to take into consideration that a low efficient power supply will kick out things like heat, which will result in noise. So if your power supply is constantly running hot, your system fans are going to be ramping up and you're going to have a louder PC. And if you're not really a fan of small fans spinning really fast, you're going to have a problem with that power supply. Personally, I do recommend trying to get the most efficient power supply that you can actually afford because more efficient power supplies usually come on higher end power supplies that will not only give more wattage, obviously, but also do give you better features like monitoring and also to fan control to allow you to run that power supply a lot more quieter and obviously give you a better experience. Again, even if you're not paying the power bill, try and still get that efficient power supply as you are going to be the one that benefits from having a better power supply and one that won't deafen you when you're trying to play your video game. So there we go, six little myths about computer power supplies. There's definitely a whole lot more out there that I do hear all the time, and also too that you do see on the internet from time to time, but there is definitely that list is the most sort of common that I do hear all the time. Let me know down in the comment sections if you think I missed a PC sort of power supply myth that you think should be on that list. Let me know. I'll be interested to see what you guys think down in that comment section. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.